Go ahead, and take us in, Grant. I'm not recording yet. We are. Yeah. Are we? <laughs> uh, it's my own. Uh, right. Right. Welcome to Owns, Twigs, and Wigs. Yeah, baby. The podcast about music. Sometimes. 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 Yeah. Anyway, guys, welcome. This is a Bones, Twigs, and Wigs podcast. It's about music sometimes, not all the time. And um, basically, we do have our first guest on, which is awesome. Dell is one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. Very, very talented performer who we all met on a series. Um, he's from Australia, the lead singer in many different projects, including his own. Um, but I met him whilst, we doing, uh, whilst he was doing the In Excess, the Australian In Excess show. I believe that's a full title. Um, correct. So anyway, so welcome. How are you doing, man? Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. We got, uh, we got th- this this half here is Australian, and then we got uh, the Northern Hemisphere <laughs> on that side. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Not just Australian, but Melbourne. That's Victorian. right. That's right. Holding it down. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that's it. That's Same it. place. I didn't know that. I didn't know. It. Yeah, he lives about fifty minutes away from me. <clears throat> hmm. Where are you, Grant? You're you're in Geelong, yeah? Yeah, like right at the right at, on the ring road. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So if you were heading to Geelong, I'm like the first place you would stop. Yeah, or, sweet. Or and driving past as fast as possible. One of the two options. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me on know. board, fellas. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a while since I've seen all three of your faces at the same time. I know, man. I know. I know you miss all of this. You know. No, I'm just saying. No, hey, no. hey, well, he's, he's coming yeah. his own. Yeah. <laughs> like I've never seen you with facial hair before, Dell. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> not many people have. Um, I actually had to buy a, an electric razor just so that I could trim the bits that grow much faster than others. Because unfortunately, <laughs> the bits that grow much faster make me look uh, <laughs> very weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, Dale. I mean, what have you been up to since all this? Because I was uh, possibly going to go and uh, be your photographer. Uh, this year when you're doing a tour in the states that was that was a bit of a yeah. and uh, and then yeah. then somebody ate a bat and ruined it um so mm. so yeah so what have you been in, i know you've just become busy so you know what have you been getting into man? yes uh well i i was actually in the u.s uh when everything sort of locked down in the in america i was uh, doing a little tour called it delacoma's cosmic experience and i was on stage in rochester new york when they shut that whole state down i got wow. off stage and the bar owner was like, well, you could possibly be the last person to get off stage in New York. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, uh, 10 minutes after you started, uh, we got word that we had to shut. And they said, well, we'll let him finish. <laughs> so an hour and a half later, got off stage. And uh, yeah, the whole tour was canceled. How many encores? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Until the police came. At least, at, at least right. 12. Um, By NWA. I was... Really. <laughs> I was in LA when, uh, when LA shut down and there was like, the news was saying that the army was coming in and locked down 48 hours to get out or stay and all that sort of stuff. So you're like the, you're like the, the bringer of COVID. (laughs) 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 You've been king the stand. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, yeah, it went from that to, uh, I didn't actually have an address in Australia at that time. I'd left uh, a suitcase with a friend of mine um, in St. Kilda uh, because I was meant to be on cruise ships or in the US for the majority of March, April and May. So I came back and had to go into quarantine. So I was like, well, my suitcase is in St. Kilda, so I guess I should quarantine there. Jesus Christ, man. (laughs) Well, I mean, if, if anybody's going to understand your plights, it's going to be the three of us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, you know that. Uh, yeah. 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 But, but yeah, now man, I've like, got my own spot now, which is exciting. Yeah, I, so, I've been, uh, I've been yeah. seeing your social media, man, because um, I think you were like one of the few people when all of this stuff was going down. I was seeing you on like airplanes and stuff. I was like, what the hell is Dale doing, man? Like He's like out and about, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, like woo. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, dude, like get in the house, man. <laughs> like go home, son. <laughs> like, what's what happening? That? Yeah, you know, because yeah. like I, I saw you kind of like posting things of like you, you know, in the States and everything. I'm like, oh, man, that's great, you yeah. know. So, yeah, so it's like, you know, it's it's tough, man. Like, we've been talking to different people. We actually have a few guests uh, 
you know, hopefully, a, a, you know, another episode, another time. But um, we have a couple guests who are actually like ship performers. Um, yep. And they're, you know, they've been like kind of going through this whole thing of being stuck on the ship. No guests yeah, on man. the ship, you know, stuff like that. So we really want to talk about that for like another episode, too. It's, it's yeah, crazy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, you know, it's people- it, it, it's it's why it's wild, um, you know, for for uh, everyone, I feel like because, well, I shouldn't say everyone because I'm sure there's some people that it hasn't really affected. But for the majority of people, either, you know, you're you're in a position where everything has changed because you've had so much taken away. And then mm-hmm. there are other fields where people are just so. Uh, much busier than they normally would. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's like they've their job has gone online, so now they're working from home, and there's been layoffs, so now they're working more hours, or in the healthcare fields, or some of the delivery fields. You know, people are working so much more than they used to be. So there's these two polar extremes, and then somewhere in the middle, there's there's just a niche of of um, professions. I feel like that it's strange because they haven't really changed. For instance, mm-hmm. in Australia, the, the building industry, I've got a mate, um, who's got, uh, a, a boy who's the same age as, well, it's my, it's my daughter's cousin and my son's cousin, obviously as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> He has his son every second weekend, right? And he's a builder. He owns his own building company. And in Australia, building hasn't shut down. So right. for him, he mm. goes out you know, to the pub every second weekend. So it's literally only every second Saturday that he even really notices that something's different. Mm-hmm. Because he goes to work the same as he normally yeah, I mean, would. Um, he, yeah. he has his son every second weekend. So it's literally only every second Saturday he goes, oh, wait, I can't go to the pub. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's, I'm like driving around, driving around like, um, like the area I'm in. It's, there's lots of, there's actually more roadworks going on than normal. Hmm. I guess if yeah. anything, it's a perfect time to get some roadworks done because yeah. the, like, the, yeah, it's, it's, it's very the, easy to find parks, which is great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same in the States too, man, especially like downtown DC. I've been like finding like parking spaces everywhere. Um, Virginia, Damn. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have like heard of Virginia, but that's like it's very close to DC. Um, yeah, they they just started. They just opened up Virginia, so a lot of people from DC and Maryland are starting to drive to Virginia, which is like a 20, 30 minute drive, just to be able to go out and go yeah. to the bar or like go hang out and stuff like that, which is stupid because if you catch something, you, you all you're going to do is just bring it right back home, you know? Yeah. It's dumb. But, um, yeah, but yeah, man, like, uh, yeah, like, like the highways, it's been construction on the highways. It's been construction on like, uh, just different things. Like they're taking this time to get a lot of things done, which is kind of cool, I guess, you know, it's like, Hey, it works, you know? Mm. It works. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but enough of all of that, man. Let's talk about Dale, man. We got a guest, guys. <laughs> you know, you know. Like, you have man, an alcoholic drink with you, Dale. That's a, that's a question that the podcast is going to revolve around. This, like, do I? Do looks like, <laughs> that looks like a cabin drink. That looks like a cabin drink to me. <laughs> you don't know what that is. You don't know what that is. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. I mean, it could be anything. It could, could be anything, that's man. Point. That's why they have money, uh, those late night talk shows. You know, you don't know what to do. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Everyone thinks you know? it's coffee. Right mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> David, that, that zibber, 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 zibber. Yeah, David, yeah. Um, but yeah, like you, you know, I know you're recording some music today. Um, yep. But there's something that was mentioned to me a little time ago by Johnny Jones, which I'm very interested by. I'll let Johnny ask you about this. <laughs> yes, we were talking <laughs> Johnny about, Jones. Well, uh, for those of you listening, uh, I perform on the ship, obviously. Like, we don't know all our backstories. You'll learn bits mm-hmm. of pieces. I'm going to shoot that bird, by the way. Um, and um, <laughs> I'm going to shoot that bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The Australian birds are so loud. I always forget how so loud, loud. The birds are. That's not and even a loud one. I'm talking about the feathered birds, not the don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, those two. They are They're in the back, like, oi, 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 mate, oi, mate, oi, 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 oi. But um, but yeah, when I perform, I always try and get as many people involved as possible, which is Johnny Grant, whoever's there, and everyone comes. Mm-hmm. In, Grant comes in all the time, and Johnny comes in all the time, and and Dell, whenever he's there, always comes in and joins me. And uh, one night we had this uh, one specific song, which is a. Uh, uh, by uh, uh, I've just completely forgotten his name. I've forgotten his name. It's Hallelujah. 
by Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen. Sorry, Leonard Cohen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when we did that song and it got all gospel, it got it got to church. And Johnny mentioned something before, which I'm interested by. Bro, let let let, let me just say this, and I, I'm gonna try to be real quick with it. Um, it was me on sax, you on guitar. Was Grant Grant? Were you there? I can't remember that. One. I very well could have been. Yeah, I'm about I, to say I, feel, he, I feel like Grant was there. Yeah, I, I feel like he was there. If if not, he might because we've done the song a couple times, but this was the first time we did it. Um, and then we also had Nate. Yeah, we we also had Nate yep, on the right. uh, on, on the Cajon right now. You know, for those who are listening or, you know, for those who know, like me and Nate are like when we're home, like we're, we're like church boys. You know what I'm saying? Like we, you know, we do I mean, we do all types of music, but most of our money making comes from like doing church gigs and stuff like that. So, you know, um, it was crazy because uh, it was crazy because like I think Dale came up and he was somebody said, you know, hey, can you do hallelujah? I think he was like, yeah, let's do hallelujah. And he gets up there and he's like taking his time. You guys know how the song goes. And if you don't, we'll put a link in, in the bio or whatever or the description. But um, but yeah, man, like he's doing this thing. All of a sudden, man, like I had a solo and I just started doing my thing. Then all of a sudden, Dale takes it back. And then all of a sudden we drop everything out and it's just nothing but just like the drum beat. Uh, uh, like just like Nate on the cajon. And then Dale's like, hallelujah just like singing and then all of a sudden like all of these drunkards <laughs> in the pub are singing hallelujah man and it's like and, and, and me and nate are looking at each other we're like bro like like do you feel like what's going on right now like there they was like there was like a it was packed as well. It's so busy. Bro, and it was packed, bro. And like it was just it yeah, was it such was. it was just such an amazing, like, you know, feeling, you know what I'm saying? And it was just just like the just the power of music, bro, just like all throughout that whole pub, man, was like was crazy. But like what blew my mind was like everybody was like twisted, drunk. It was like 30 <laughs> people, 30 people with their phones in the air. <laughs> Hi, you know, like just going crazy, bro. Remember, I got on the mic afterwards and I was like, bro, like we just got 30 people to say 30 drunk people to say hallelujah, bro. And like have church. It feels like I just got out of church, man. And I said it next to Dale and Dale whispers in my ear. He's like, yeah, man, um, you know, I actually used to be a pastor. <laughs> and like, I'm holding my sacks and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, we just I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what did really? And he's like, yeah, man, you, you know, I'll, yeah. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, I, I'll tell you about that later. And like, and I never, I never got the story, bro. Like, I meant to ask him about it, you know, before he <laughs> left. He ended up leaving, but I never got a chance to ask. So that's what I yeah. want to know. Yeah, you said he used to be a past. You, you said like a youth pastor or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So I actually grew up as a missionary kid in. Um, 
before I start the story, that was a very special moment, uh, by the way. That's uh, we've had a few very. special moments, like in that in in that pub, uh, but that was definitely one of those special moments uh, for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I grew up uh, as a missionary kid in Tasmania. Wow. My uh, my grandfather is an Italian immigrant to Australia in in North Queensland. He ended up uh, becoming a preacher and moved down to Tasmania. And when I was a kid, my parents wanted to um, be closer to him and help him start a church. That was how I grew up. I grew up in an a cappella church, which wow. means like no instruments at all. Yeah. So straight um, vocals. Yeah. Yeah. Straight vocals. So um, that was how I grew up. And I actually went to Bible college uh, in the US. Uh, I went as a tennis player um, and my major was human communication. But uh, it was a Bible. It was a small Bible college in Nebraska. Good grit. Good grit. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> Italians to Australia to America with tennis. Yeah, vocal. I know, bro. I know. Your life, bro. Your life is a is a movie, <laughs> son. Like what? The- <laughs> oh my god. Um, that is amazing, man. <laughs> but um, I know <laughs> we're gonna touch on a few things that you're all gonna kind of be like, what, what, wait. But oh, I'll sorry. I'll do the really brief <laughs> uh, the brief story here. So I ended up uh, marrying uh, the the preacher's daughter um, <laughs> in in university, and <laughs> and then getting, Let's talk about this. Uh, and then getting <laughs> and then getting yeah, and then getting divorced um, and moved out to Texas to uh, work on a wind farm. And I hated working on the wind farm. So I moved to LA uh, to become an actor. And while I was doing acting. (laughs) It's like an episode of Glee, but like. (laughs) I know, I know. So while I was in LA, I was still, um, still quite active in the church. And while I was in LA, I, as, as I'm starting to tell this story, I'm real, um, I'm reliving some parts that uh, I'm oh. realizing is as, as, as I'm as I'm about to say it, you guys are going to laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the jobs I picked up while I was uh, working as an actor, because everybody knows when you're working as an actor in LA, you know you've actually got other jobs to support yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I picked up a job uh, be, uh, playing Jack Sparrow for kids' parties. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the least surprising uh, thing you said thus far, right? Because, like, like, that's that's all I see, that's all I see now. I I can't unsee that. I just, I can't, yeah. Why is the rum gone? Why why is the rum always gone? (laughs) He's perfect for it, anyway. Um, so I went to, uh, I I helped out um, a mate of mine who was a youth pastor in Southern California. He said, Hey, uh, do you want to come help me at this youth camp? And I said, yeah, I'd love to. Um, always had a passion for, um, for working with youth. And um, so I went out and I was helping him at this youth camp in Southern California and um, started talking to um, a few kids uh, from Northern Orange County. Um, and they were, uh, they were saying how they felt like something was wrong with, with them, that they were bad kids because they'd had three youth pastors quit in the space of two years. Wow. And I was kind of saying to them, look, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it's not you, it's, there's other factors involved and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, it it was something that was just on my heart um, coming out of that, that period. I, I came back from that youth camp and I called up the uh, elders of the church and I said, Hey, you know, here's a situation, you know, here's my background. Um, I'd really like to come in and instead of you guys rushing into hiring another youth pastor, I'd love to come in and just kind of help out because I've already met these kids at the youth camp and everything just help out while you're while you're doing your hiring process so that you can hire the right person to be there a little bit more long term mm-hmm. for these kids um and so obviously you know they they had me in for a couple you know like I guess an interview of sorts um and um and that turned into yeah me doing that on a part time basis. And after a while, they asked me if I would interview for the actual job. And I said, "Look, that's not really my thing, um, but I'd like to keep helping out." And another four weeks goes by, and they were like, "Look, we think you're doing a really good job, um, and especially with your background in human communication as well." So I ended up um, coming on board as the associate minister um, was my official title. And it was um, half working with the youth, half working on racial integration um, wow. because 
it was it was in Whittier, California. So back in the seventies, um, it was where rich white people moved to build their mansions. Hmm. And what happened in the eighties and nineties was um, a lot of uh, a, a lot of blacks and Hispanics um, that had been into gangs that wanted to clean their life up. They got out of uh, out of jail and they they would go back to their old neighborhoods and they'd find they're getting themselves back into the same old patterns. Mm -hmm. And, and so what happened was there was several of them that were like, okay, we need to change our environment. So they would move one suburb over. And then as they were able to afford a little bit more, they'd move one suburb suburb over again. And what happened in the late nineties was the property values in Whittier had dropped because there were, there were, people living in the area that were deemed to be, you know, distasteful to the area. Mm -hmm. And so you had in this congregation, this is just the reality, right? In the congregation amongst the the 60 plus year olds, you had predominantly white people that were kind of stuck there because they paid a lot of money for a, a place back in the day and it wasn't worth much anymore. So their retirement nest egg was now worth next to nothing because they were now in the minority. And the 60 plus year olds that were of other nationalities were so grateful to be there because they had, they had over the last like 30 years, they'd worked their way out of being in, in places that they didn't want to be. Now, amongst the grandkids of these people, they just grew up together. They had no idea. So it was this really weird, um, I don't know, it was this strange vortex in, in, I mean, in the society, but especially in the churches as well, because the 60 plus year olds, they'd seen their property values dip to the point where, you know, they can't move because if they sell it, they're not going to be able to move anywhere else. Right. Or you're like, you've worked your whole life to get here and you're both meeting at the same, the property value is the same. Mm -hmm. And one, one set of people have seen it drop and the other set of people have worked to get up there. And then you followed, then the in-between generation has kind of seen it. And then the younger generation, they've got no idea. They just know that they both got the same size house and they live next door to each other. Mm -hmm. So it was this really strange thing. So I was brought in basically Mm -hmm. to the youth group when I joined um, they, they had 90% of the youth group was in juvenile detention of some sort, um, predominantly for graffiti. Um, so what I did was I, when I came really? in, they asked me, <laughs> okay, what are you going to do about this? And I said, well, first and foremost, I said, I'm going to change, I'm going to reframe the way I'm going to reframe what's going on because you guys are telling me graffiti is wrong and I'm going, to, I'm going to reframe that. The graffiti, you break it down, there's two parts mm-hmm. to it. One's the art and mm-hmm. one is where it is. And I said, the art's not wrong, but where it is is what's exactly. wrong. So right. I gave a, I had my first sermon that I gave there. I had a kid come up front and, um, and I, it was a very talented artist, but he'd just gotten out of juvie because he graffitied this cop car, which is stupid. Obviously, right? <laughs> but I brought him up front and I said, Alberto is an incredibly talented, and this is in front of the whole congregation, right? Mm-hmm. Alberto is a very, very talented artist. And I said, I, I want you, I want you to um I want you to like draw like while I'm talking on my coat. He goes, What? I said, No, just 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 draw while I'm talking, while I'm talking. And at first he was a bit weird about it. And I said, no, no, just keep going. So he's, he's drawn away and I, I'd worn a white coat on purpose. So he's drawn away just while I'm talking and I'm moving and everything. Mm-hmm. And it was this cool little piece, right? And afterwards and I said, you see, now go sit down. Now I asked another kid um, to come up and I said, Hey man, can you come up? And he goes, yeah, yeah, cool. And I pulled out um, a pen and I said, Oh, I love your jeans. And he's like, yeah, yeah, cool. And I went to, I went to Mark on his jeans and he goes, Whoa, what are you doing? I said, oh, I was just going to draw on it. And he goes, man, these are my nice jeans. And I said, you can go sit down now. I said, that right there, that whole thing, 
is the crux of the issue here. The art is not the problem. It's about whether right. you've been p- given permission to do that, right? So my exactly. whole program was built around, we used to go dumpster diving and they would do like their art pieces on, on, on bits of board and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I'm getting off, off topic here, but that was my... That was that was my experience as a pastor. I ended up getting fired as a pastor. Oh my god! I gotta hear this. I gotta, I gotta hear this. <laughs> we don't have any lawyers yet. We haven't got any lawyers yet involved. Like, uh, yeah, like, no, oh, no. you don't say, right? <laughs> um, I uh, I essentially I'd been my methods obviously were not. Um, not uh, your your standard methods, um, but it got it got to <laughs> it got to a point where where um, uh, yeah I the uh, elders of the church wanted me to be doing main like nine to five hours, and I said a lot of my work I said I'm dealing with like ex gangbangers right, and like right, kids right. that have grown up around stuff. Yeah. I go my my job is not in the office. I'm like right. you want me to work nine to five. Right but you also want me to do something that's going to make a difference in these people's lives. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that happens from like two till midnight. Exactly. Like in the streets Um, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Where they're hanging out on the corner or whatever. You you got to talk to them. Do you think they actually care? Do you think the elders actually care when it comes to stuff like that? I I feel like a lot of it is just, People just want a happy, nice life. They're a certain situation. Like just, just do the nice fight. No, just don't do it. Just keep it simple. Don't ruffle any feathers, do that. And nothing changes if that's what carries on. Exactly. And that was my, uh, you know, I, I think I've, I've gotten myself in a lot of trouble and a lot of different uh, scenarios in life because uh, that's not really something that I, um, I, I value. I want, mm-hmm. I want there, if, if you're cool with, you know, just doing the same thing, that's awesome. You know, but if you actually want a job to be done and you ask me to do a job, then the reality is I feel like you shouldn't question the method. You should question whether the job's done or not. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just kind of how I operate. And if you if you want me literally just to follow a, a set of That's steps, great. it was like a title. It, it you don't like care about the outcome, then tell me that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of beautiful. times I, I think when it comes to uh, communication, mm-hmm. um, there is an un, uh, uh, in a in most of society, there's an unspoken level to what everybody says. And, and I personally really struggle with that. Yeah. I want, I want what's said to be what's said and not have to like sift through and figure out what the meaning is. It's mm-hmm. like, do you want me to do that? Do you want me to make a difference? Or do you want me to like follow this set of steps? Which is it? Because if you want me to do a job, if you want, if you want me to, you know, do a vocal track, you know, you shouldn't care whether I record it hanging upside down or whether I'm like running on a treadmill or whether I'm singing through a phone. All it should be is whether the vocal track is good or not. Exactly. Right. Right. I can respect that. I, I think like, you know, to add a add little two cents, um, I think what it is, too, is like, you know, like those elders, man, they are they're not, you know, they're not in the streets with these kids, you know what I'm saying? They don't understand like, you know, like what's really going on. They, but like what I will say, like to answer Steve too, is like, you know, I think that they do care. Um, The amount of how much they care, who knows, but you know, but I I think there is like some type of care there, but it's just like, you know, you got to understand like, you know, who you're dealing with before you, you know, work with them or before you try to, you know, yeah. deal with them, you know what I'm saying? And Dale, like, I, I feel you, bro, because you're just like, man, these kids aren't on nine to five hours, bro. Like, nine to five, they're asleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, after that, they're up all night, like, you know, just out here doing God knows what, you know what I'm saying? And and that's when, you know, my work is, is is you know, like, it's going to come in handy, you know what I'm saying? So I, I totally feel yeah. you on that one. Mm-hmm. I had a I had a gun pulled on me, um, oh, like one of the scariest moments of my life. I'm sorry about uh, that. Like I it. couldn't hear that song again. I apologize. <laughs> 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 um, there was a um, a kid that came to me and he said, "I think my brother's or my dad's using again." Wow. Um, and I and um, 
And the, the, so the son that was in the youth group, so his dad was like 60 because he was like, he, he basically had a kid when he was young and then he got mm. out of, he got out, he did like real hard time for being in a Mexican gang and he got out of prison and then he cleaned up his life and he got together with the mom of the kid that was in my youth group. Right. So mm-hmm. that kid's older brother was like 40 or something. Right. And he mm. was still in the gang. Right. And he goes, anyway, I went over to the guy's house and, um, we had dinner and, and I pulled him aside and said, Hey, there's no real easy way to say this. I said, um, I, your son is concerned about you. And, and, um, from something, some of the things that he said, um, I have reason to believe, you know, that maybe that you're using again, and I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I am here to say, you know, that there's people that care about you. And, um, he grabbed me, this Mexican dude. It was quite a large fellow. Um, not, uh, not very gently grabbed me by the front of my shirt and threw oh, me against geez. the wall and stuck a uh, pistol in my left eye socket and uh, said, can I, can I swear on air? Yeah, yeah, yeah. do your thing, man. He said, uh, don't you fucking come into my house and tell me what the fuck to do. Wow. And uh, I will say this is probably, uh, it was not me speaking because I don't think I would have had the balls to say this. So it was uh, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps a, a Holy Spirit moment uh, here. But I, up against the wall with a, with a revolver in my eye socket, I said, mate, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to let you know that there's people that care about you no matter what. Mm-hmm. And it felt like an eternity. It was probably only like, you know, a couple seconds. Right. Um, but uh, he let me go and he said, get out. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say yes, sir, at the end of that. <laughs> I don't know what else, and and um, about uh, three months later, he came into my office and he, he didn't say anything. He just gave me a big hug. And then he walked back out again. And, wow. um, and I remember... Sorry about that. For some reason, my video just dropped out again. Um, but yeah. uh, I remember saying to the elders, <laughs> "I'm just upgrading our account, by the way, so that we get cut off. So you guys carry on. I'm just, I'm just doing something." So, <laughs> evening. Um, uh, I remember saying to the elders, "The goal here, because they they were asking, how can you measure, you know, what you're doing?" And I said, "It's not up to me to measure what I'm doing. The, 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 it's up to me to to do what I, I feel like." you know, is, is actually making a difference. And we may never know whether it made a difference or not. Yeah. But I think um, you can get too caught up, especially in that side of things, whether you're talking about like in the church or, or um, even being a, like just a teacher in general life, you can, sometimes you can get too caught up in the X's and O's of things, you know, and the numbers of things rather than mm-hmm. just going, I'm going to do it what I believe to be best. And, um, and 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 believe that it, it's changing lives. Right. But it actually doesn't. It's not about me. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. Is it's yeah. not about me. If I'm doing it's, my job right, I could be impacting people in a positive way, and I'll never know. Right. And that's cool. Mm-hmm. It's all about the mission, you know. That's it. Do you miss it? Have, uh, sorry, that, Steve. Well, I was going to say, do you miss it? And and do you feel like? Do you feel like what we're doing as musicians, do you feel like you can affect people in a similar way? Like, do you feel like you can bring a message 100%. to people? I, I do feel like, you know, we have a, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I do feel like what we do is pointless. When you go through that little dark side, you're like, what's the point in my life? I'm not going to save anybody's life. And mm-hmm. especially these dark times mm-hmm. we're all going through, definitely I've, I live in my own head, as we all know. But there are other times when I'm feeling slightly more positive when I'm like, you know what? We do make people happy. You know, we do have that moment, like listening to, we're talking about vinyls before Dell, um, listen to something like, yeah, but like things that I've not got involved with before and stuff. And music can change your day. It really can change your day. 100%. And it can change yeah. lives, I think as well. The same way a good movie can, you know, that's why movies are so important. And that's why, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'll let you talk about, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like, do you feel the same way? I mean, yeah. Absolutely. hundred percent. Like I, um, my, my daughter, um, so I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, sp- I split from my ex-wife a, a couple of years ago, so I'm not able to be with my kids as much as I'd like to. And sometimes my, my daughter, who's almost eight now, she'll say, Oh, daddy, why do you have to go away? You know? Oh, um, and, um, and I said to her one time, I said, well, um, 
I said, daddy's job is, is to make people happy. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know how like when you hear a song that you really like or, or, you know, you're, or, or something just makes you dance. And I go, well, somebody has got to make, make that. And I said, that's my job. And I honestly, as, as cheesy as that sounds, I honestly feel like if I do my job right as, as a musician and as an artist, I'm either make, I, I help people to find happiness because you can't really make people happy, but you can help people to find their own happiness or you can make people think. And I feel like as an artist, that's how I view, I guess, if, if you're really to break it down, um, I just, I want people to think about just, just think rather than going through the, the normal humdrum or if, or if we're talking about on the ships, you know, like people, you know, in 270 or whatever, you want mm-hmm. people to come in there, you know, they're, they're, they can go to anything on that ship, but if they're yeah. in there and they're, you know, um, we're not playing songs that any of us on stage wrote, you know, but hopefully you're taking them back to a place when they were dancing to those songs. Hopefully, exactly. you know, if they've, if they've never heard of in excess, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're watching the show and they're having a good time and they, they forget about time for a while. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think that, you know, you're right, Stephen, like we're not curing cancer or anything like that, but guess what? You know, you can make somebody forget that they have cancer for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not, um, mending relationships, but you know what? You can make somebody forget about the fact that they've having relationship problems for a little while. You know, you're not fixing money problems, but you can help somebody forget about the fact that they're having money problems for a little while. And sometimes that helps the subconscious to actually work things out. When you take the conscious brain out of, Mm -hmm. out of the wheelhouse just for a little bit, it can sometimes allow things to just drop into place. Yeah, allow, allow, I suppose allowing that breathing room for somebody to live in that that minute, that song, mm-hmm. that, that hour, moment. concert, that moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. which a lot of times we're all, I mean, as musicians, I suppose, we, we live a different life to a lot of people. But we're still thinking about work. We're still thinking about problems. We're still away from home a lot. We're still traveling. We're still blah, blah, blah. And yeah, just having that five minutes of, forgetting about that can reset that battery a little bit. Yeah, I'll recharge that battery, sorry, reset that thing, that, the problems. Yeah, no, definitely. I, yeah. yeah, It's something that I think when when we're feeling a bit down in these times, it's to remind ourselves of that is quite important. I, I struggle with that stuff, to be honest. So it's something to tell myself, no, it is a worthwhile thing to do. Right. There's, the reason why we're all doing what we're doing is because music touched us personally. Or oh, whatever art started us all off. Yeah. yeah, 100%. 100%. The bird sang on cue then. That was beautiful. I know, right? It's like <laughs> on point, man. Somebody signed that bird, man. <laughs> you know, get get these record execs out here. That's it. Oh, my God, man. So, yo, yo, G, you got any questions, man? You've been you've been kind of quiet, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're on the same no, time. You, you should, like, drinking coffee and vodka at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, yeah, but I... I don't run on a, I don't run on a, uh, sleep schedule. I just kind of, yeah, run, I just run the tank dry. There you go. And then, yeah, Mm -hmm. I've been up for a long time. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Just enjoying, you know, listening to the birds. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking, I'm just listening to the birds sing. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Oh man. Dell, if we get too bored, we can always just go to Darwin, right? <laughs> right? You and me, a little road trip to Darwin. Then we, we oh, can go dude. we can get a gig at a You're a long way from Darwin. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah but Darwin's awesome. <laughs> I like Wait, it. Was, Wait, Darwin's let's do it. Hell let's do it, Grant. <laughs> What's going on I've in never Darwin? Been. I have no idea. No there's, idea. No, there's no oh, it's great. It's um it's really quiet during the day. But mm-hmm. there's only and there's only really kind of one street that's um you know, in any way active. Like it's like one of those one main street sort of towns. Yeah. But it's completely, it's just filled with pubs. And you'll notice that every single pub throughout each pub, there's, it's just lined with stripper poles. <laughs> <laughs> because the second the sun goes down and it gets a little cooler, people just go absolutely fucking mental. 
in Darwin. Sounds like Bourbon Street. It's crazy. Sounds yeah. like my type of street. It is exactly yeah, Bourbon like Street. The- I was going to say Key West. Sorry, it might be Key West. But- <laughs> it's, it's basically yeah. Pattaya. It's walking street. Pattaya, Pattaya. Wow, Pattaya. Wow. Well, it's, it's close Steve to Pattaya. Steve knows what I'm talking about. Jeez. If you haven't been to Pattaya, uh, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to get clean. That's one of my... Uh, one of my favorite memories in my life was taking Steve to a ping pong show. <laughs> oh God! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But, but Johnny, the best thing was we turned up there, and I was like, oh, I was obviously cool with it. I'm like, yeah, well, you mm-hmm. do it, cool. Um, I, but went in there, and every single person, I mean, like every person in this show yeah. was basically a singer, performer, dancer, musician from our ship. It was like we just taken all the entire. Ship. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, what the hell. But we sat down and some of the smell was in there and oh. uh, and there was razor blades being pulled out of things and there was bottle top. Oh. I was just like, no, no, no. I mean, I know there's tricks to this stuff, but tricks I'd never want to know about. And I, I was just, it was one of those just, uh, my very Englishness kept coming out. I'm like, I just, oh, just, just my hands, it was, my hands <laughs> right. do this a lot. He did this, he did this, right? He, like, my oh. bobblehead, I was like, oh, no. oh he did. <laughs> It was everything that I wanted that night to be. Oh my god! I took man. Steve. I took Steve to all the places that would make him uncomfortable, and it was <laughs> glorious. And we ended up making yeah. other people. Other people got really uncomfortable, which is good. We're gonna we're gonna save that for 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 oh, another yeah. episode. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Hey, I've got a I've got to get back uh, to recording here, fellas. Do your thing, so, man. Uh, I might look, uh, bid you adieu. But yeah. before you leave, man, go ahead and put all of your uh, contact information out there. Um, like, how can people reach you if they see this or, you know, yeah. where can they find your music? All of that good stuff. Um, just if you Google Delacoma with mm-hmm. two L's, um, you'll uh, find me or my band. I'm on Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. Cool. I am on TikTok, but I haven't really worked it out uh, yet. I, so I don't really, I'm not pretty active. Oh, <laughs> It's all good. good. Wait, uh, everything else. I wouldn't. We'd encourage people to follow Dale on Instagram. It's great. His story's quite entertaining. You can watch his man up the walls of his house and (laughs) right. It's hilarious. It's it's usually my. You're like the closest thing that I have to the dean from Community. (laughs) 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 You're wearing you wear lots of costumes and sing songs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Characters and everything. <laughs> One of the first things I do basically when I wake up, because we've all got our different, uh, like well, I was going to say sleep schedules, time schedules, we're, we're literally in different parts of the globe, but I'll just yeah. go Instagram, just go, and always, there's always a good couple of minutes lying in bed just going, what did Dell do today? Or what did Del do today? <laughs> <laughs> wow, let's see what Del did. Nice food. You know, it's a nice food. Never see it live, but I always see it after the point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, you know, you guys heard it here, man. You know, make sure you guys go follow our boy, Dell. That's uh, Della Coma. Just look it up. Google search, all that good stuff. Um, man, you guys don't understand. This guy is a rocker. So this is the reason why we had to question his his past. <laughs> because if you see this cat on stage, <laughs> like vocals out of this world. And he's just he, he's such a rock star. So when I heard he was he, he was a pastor, like once upon a time, it, it blew my mind. And I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that you didn't tell me like you didn't share this story because now we got this podcast and you can share it live. You know what I'm saying? To the world. That's it. So it's That's perfect. It. You know what? That's it. The the being a pastor thing might explain how your ankle miraculously healed. That's a very good point. Well, that is that's different. That's, In fact, do you know what? Yeah. Don't, don't tell that story. We have to do yeah, you got to come back another time and tell us the story. Yeah, of there, that. Is no. there is a little miracle involved, Wait. which which you might not know about, Johnny. So we'll have to share that. Save it. And, yeah. And we're we're going to ring Del. We're going to ring Del. Alcohol. Ring Del drive stories. Yeah. stories. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, look, I'm going to go ahead and sign right. us out, man. Thank you guys for uh, all of our listeners, all of our viewers. Thank you guys for uh, checking out the Bones, Twigs, and Wigs podcast uh, featuring our brother, Dale, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, thanks again for coming on, brother. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Love you guys. It's really good to see you.